Our MernStack project needs authentication and authorization. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will apply user authentication and authorization to the backend REST API of our MernStack project. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. In lessons one through four, we built a functioning backend REST API for our MernStack project. And in lessons five through seven, we created the front end React app for our MernStack project. It should currently complete all CRUD operations for both notes and users. At the end of Lesson 7, I left you with a viewer challenge to complete the new note form and the edit note form for the app. I hope you did well, and remember, you can view my source code for Lesson 7 in the course resources to compare your code to mine. Let's start today by quickly reviewing the difference between authentication and authorization. While many use the terms interchangeably or simply refer to the abbreviation auth, they are not the same things. Authentication refers to the process of verifying who someone is. Authorization is the process of verifying what resources a user has access to. When we log in with the username and password, we are verifying who we are, and that is authentication. After logging in, our app users will be issued JSON web tokens, also known as JWTs. While it's true that possessing a JWT confirms the user authentication has already taken place, users send JWTs back in a request authorization header to prove they are authorized to access the REST API endpoints and data resources. Today's starter code is the completed code from lesson four, where we left off working with the backend REST API. We are back to add authentication and authorization to the API now. So the only change we're going to make in the package JSON right now is to go from lesson four to now save this as lesson eight in the name. Now let's move on to the server.js file. Not much to do here, but we do need to add our auth route. So it's going to look a lot like the users and notes route. So I'm just going to click on line 29, press shift alt and the down arrow to copy down the users route. And above the users route, I'll put in the auth route and it's going to go to routes and then auth routes. So we'll just save that line and we're finished with the server JS. Now let's go to the routes folder. And when we highlight that, we can create a new file and we'll name this auth routes.js and I'll start with the imports. I'll just quickly paste those in and we can look at this. It starts with express being required and then we're creating a router from express.router. This is exactly what we did in our previous routes files and then we're bringing in the auth controller but we haven't created that yet so that will be coming up very soon. After that we simply have a few routes to handle so we'll have router.route and this will be the root route, so it just has slash. Now, of course, this would be at slash auth already as we're directed to the auth routes. But then after that, there wouldn't be anything, I guess, to follow auth as far as in the URL. Then we'll have dot post, and we'll just put this here as a placeholder now because we haven't created that auth controller yet. Now let's move down to the next route, and we'll say router dot route, and this will be slash refresh. So the full URL would be the root URL, then slash auth, then slash refresh. After that, we need the refresh route to be a git method. So we'll just put an empty git here for now as we wait on that auth controller. And then we have one more route. So router.route once again, and this will be slash logout. And now this one will be a post request. So we'll put in an empty post method there to handle what we get from the auth controller after we create it. Then we'll have module.exports and we'll set this equal to router. And we can save the file for now, but we have some methods to create in the auth controller. Before we move on to that auth controller, we need to create a rate limiter for our login route, the root route here in our auth routes. So to do that, we have one more dependency to add. I'll go back to the package JSON and we'll scroll up where we can see all of our dependencies. Press control and the back tick to open up the terminal window. I'll pull it down just a little bit. Then I'm going to type npm i and then express dash rate dash limit. 
It shouldn't take long to install. And now we see it in our dependencies right here inside of our package JSON. Now that we have that, let's go to our middleware directory that we have here and create a new file. And let's call this login limiter .js. I'll start by defining rate limit and we'll set this equal to require and then we'll have express dash rate limit that we see from our Visual Studio Code IntelliSense. After that, I also want to bring in the log events middleware that we previously created. So it's right here in this directory already. So we'll just say require dot slash and it comes from the logger file. After that, I'm just going to paste in some code that we can go over. I'll press Control B to hide the file tree and also Control Z because we had a long line there that wraps. So now we can look at the details of this code. I'll get rid of that extra line. But we're creating a login limiter with rate limit. And pretty much everything you see in here then are options for rate limit that we're setting inside of an object. Let's just go over these. First, we're setting the time and we're setting this to one minute. So 60 times 1000 milliseconds. Then we're setting the max rate limit. So notice I put a note here, this limits each IP to five login requests per window per minute. And then we have a message if that is exceeded. So too many login attempts from this IP, please try again after a 60 second pause. And then we have a handler. And this handler is going to handle what happens if this limit is achieved. And so we're going to log events here, this middleware we created where we can see a log that there were too many requests and where it's coming from. This gets written to our error log if we need to refer to that. Then we're also going to send this status with the status code and the message back. And then these are setting standard headers and legacy headers that are simply recommended in the documentation for this middleware. So I set those as recommended. And now we have our login limiter that we will be able to use specifically in our login path. So if we go back to auth routes now, we should be able to include this by saying const login limiter, and then we will require this and it's going to come from our middleware directory and then be in the login limiter file. Then we can use this specifically in a route. So this is our login route, the root route. So we'll just say login limiter goes right here and then we'll put a comma and then this will be awaiting what method we call from our auth controller. So now it's time to go back to the file tree. So I'll show that again, go to the controllers directory and we need to create auth controller.js. Now I'm just going to paste in the simple code for now and we will review this code. But quickly we just bring in the user data model. We also bring in the bcrypt dependency that we were previously using to encrypt the passwords as we stored them. Now we'll need to decrypt those with bcrypt so we can read them and compare to what the user is providing to authenticate with. We've also got a JSON web token dependency that we're going to call JWT. So we're going to need to add that dependency. And then we've got our async handler that we have used in the other controllers as well to catch any unexpected errors and pass those on to our custom error handler. So I'll save this right now and we will come back and describe these empty handler methods that we have as far as log in, refresh and log out in our controller. But right now, before we forget, let's add that JSON web token dependency. So I'm back at the package JSON, control and back tick once again, type npm i and JSON web token and add this to our dependencies as well. Once I close the terminal window, we now see it added to our list of dependencies here. We're good to go. I'll scroll back up to that auth controller and let's quickly look at these. We've got the description route and access for each one. The login route is publicly accessed and it's at slash auth, which comes of course after whatever the root URL is. And then we also have a public route for refresh, which is slash 
auth slash refresh. And this needs to be public because our access token, our JWT that will give us access, will have expired. So the only way to get a new access token will be to have a valid refresh token that we send to this endpoint. And then we have the logout method. And this is going to be at slash auth slash logout. And it can be public as well. And we're going to clear a cookie at this logout route or with this logout method if we do have a cookie. So we're exporting these three methods from this controller. So before we put this logic in, at least since we have the placeholders in place, let's go back to the auth routes and put the rest of the information that we need from the auth controller into our routes. So we're going to start out with auth controller and I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need it a couple of more times. Then we can say dot and we want login first. We can use IntelliSense to help complete these. After that, in the refresh route, we're going to have auth controller dot refresh. And in the logout route, we're going to have auth controller dot logout, which is also in my list. And we can save and we're now finished with the auth routes and we have the middleware that we're using, our login limiter as well. So now everything we need to complete is going to be inside of the auth controller. For these three methods, we just need to add the logic. But before we do so, I think it's a good time to review a little bit of information about JSON web tokens, JWTs. JWTs are referenced as a form of user identification, which is issued after the initial user authentication takes place. When a user completes their login and they are authenticated, our REST API will issue the client application an access token and a refresh token. An access token is given a short time before it expires, for example, 5 to 15 minutes. A refresh token is given a longer duration before it expires, possibly several hours, a day, or even days. Our REST API will send and receive access tokens as JSON data. We will store access tokens in our application state so they will be automatically lost when the app is closed. We won't put these access tokens in local storage or cookies. If you can store it somewhere with JavaScript, a hacker can also retrieve it with JavaScript. Our REST API will issue refresh tokens in an HTTP-only cookie. This type of cookie cannot be accessed with JavaScript. Refresh tokens do need to have an expiration, which will then require users to log in again. Refresh tokens should not have the ability to issue new refresh tokens because that would grant indefinite access. The overall access token process involves issuing an access token after user authentication. The user's application can then access our REST API's protected routes with the access token until it expires. Our REST API will verify the token with middleware every time the token is used to make a request. When the access token does expire, the user application will need to send the refresh token to our REST API's refresh endpoint to be granted a new access token. Of course, the refresh token is also issued after user authentication. Our REST API's refresh endpoint will verify the token. If the refresh token is valid, a new access token will be provided to the user's application. And remember, a refresh token must be allowed to expire at some point to prevent indefinite access. We are back in Visual Studio Code. Now, before before we can create the logic for our controller methods, we need to create a couple of secret keys that we will use to create our access and refresh tokens that are issued by the REST API. So to do that, we're going to store them in our .env file. They will be environment variables. So let's name those variables now. We'll use all caps and we'll type access underscore token underscore secret and we'll have an equals, and then I'm just going to shift alt and the down arrow because all I need to do here is change this to refresh token secret. And this is where we will store both of those values. So now let's create those values. Press control in the back tick to open up a terminal window. I'm going to scroll up for just a little more room. We can create our secrets right here in the terminal and we can do it with a module that is built into Node. So I'm just going to type Node first and press return. And now we're at a Node.js prompt inside of the terminal. Now I can require the module that we need. So I'll say require, and it is the crypto module. After that, I'll put dot random 
bytes in camel case, so a capital B, and put 64 inside there. And then one more dot, and then two string, so we call the two string method, and let's supply hex. Now after this, I'll press enter, and we get a secret key. And of course, I'll change mine after this as well, but we copy this, you can do the same, and after you copy it, you can paste it in as your access token secret. Now we could press Alt-Z to wrap the code, and you can see it's a fairly long string. Now, we don't really need to type all that again, we can just press the up arrow, and it issues the same command, so I'll press Enter again, and we get a different string back. So I'll copy this one, and I'll put it in for my refresh token secret and paste that in. And now I'll save the .env file and close out of the terminal. Well, I guess I could go back to the terminal quickly and press Control C to escape that node prompt and then close out. But there is our .env file. Now we have an access token secret and a refresh token secret. So now let's put our logic inside of the login method of our auth controller. And I'll start out with the basics here. Let's go over this. We are expecting a username and a password to come in when a user logs in. This is the authentication process. And so we'll say if we do not receive a username or a password, we will send a bad request status, which is a 400, and a message that all fields are required. Then we'll look for the user in our MongoDB database in the users collection, and if we do not find a user, or if the user is not active, remember we have that active status for each user that Dan D will be able to deactivate a user even if we still want to keep them in the database because they are linked to notes. So if the user is not active or does not exist, then we'll send the 401 unauthorized. If the user does exist, we will try to match the password then, and we're using bcrypt to compare the password that we received to the password that is stored in the database. And again, if there is not a match, then we'll return a 401 again, which is again unauthorized. After this, I'll scroll for some more room, and we need to create our access token, our refresh token, and our secure HTTP only cookie. So let's start out by creating this access token. And so you'll see I'm defining an access token variable. And now I'm using the JWT that we created above when we imported the JSON web token dependency. So this is JWT.sign. And now we're creating that access token here. So it contains what looks like an object and we've got user info. And inside that user info, we have username and roles. So this information is being inserted into that access token and we would need to destructure that access token when we return that information in the front end application as well. So all the front end will have in state is the access token until we destructure it or decrypt it and pull this information out. And notice we're now passing in our environment variable that has the access token secret to create this. Now here in development, I'm only setting the access token to 10 seconds at first. So we'll see it expire very rapidly. But when we're finished, we're going to want to set this to something like 15 minutes. Likewise, right now I have the refresh token at one day and we'll probably come back and modify this to even a shorter amount of time when we're testing it out just to make sure it works because we won't want to wait a day to see how it reacts when it expires. However, with Dandy's user requirements and the user stories we have, he wanted users to have to log in at least every seven days. So we'll probably eventually during deployment set this more like seven days and that way they won't have to log in every day if they don't log out. Okay, now the cookie, the create secure cookie with the refresh token we've just created above. So now we have a response with a cookie. We're naming it JWT and we're passing in that refresh token. Now here are the options we want to make sure we have set. So HTTP only is set to true and this means only accessible by a web server. Likewise, secure is set to true. Now this means HTTPS. Same site we set to none, so cross-site availability is a possibility, and that's 
because we will be hosting our REST API possibly at one server, we may have our application at another server. So we do want to allow a cross-site cookie. Now max age, here we're setting this to match the refresh token. So this would be our seven days. Actually, if we look at this, this is 1000 milliseconds. Now this is 60, so 60 seconds and 1000 milliseconds. So there we get one minute. And now we have 60 times one minute, which would be one hour. 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. And so that's how that max age is calculated. Then we are sending back the access token in the JSON. So the client application receives the access token, the server sets the cookie. So the client application with React never actually handles the refresh token inside of this cookie, but we will ensure that when React sends a request, to the refresh endpoint that this cookie is sent along with it. Now let's move on to the refresh method inside of this auth controller. And we'll once again start out with the simple stuff at the top where we're expecting a cookie with the request. And if we don't have a cookie named JWT as we expect, then we're going to send a 401 unauthorized. If we do have it, then we're going to set the refresh token variable to that cookie. And after that, we need to use our JWT dependency to verify this token. So then we're going to call JWT verify, as you can see right here after we set that refresh token variable. And then we pass in the refresh token variable. And then we pass in our refresh token secret that we have inside of our uh, environment variables. Now we're going to use that async handler that we're using to catch any possible async uh, error that we did not expect. But notice we've already done the verify process here. We've already completed the verify process, I should say. And if an error is created, it is passed in here as an argument. And so this async handler is going to catch errors that we did not expect, but if there's an error from the verify process, it's right here. And so then inside this function, we're responding to that error. And if we do have an error there, we're going to send a 403, a little different than a 401. 403 is a forbidden response, and that's the message we're sending along with that. Then we once again look to see if we have a user and if we do have the user from the decoded username that should be inside of the refresh token, then we're going to say, uh, or if we do not have that user, then we're going to say 401 unauthorized again. Hopefully we do have the user. And if we do, we're going to create a new access token with that username and with the roles. And then we're going to pass in that access token secret again because we're creating an access token. Right now, I once again have the access token expiring in 10 seconds, which we would change before deployment. This is just for development. And we're responding with the access token. And again, this is because the refresh endpoint should issue a new access token if the refresh token is valid. And now let's move on to the logout method, which has the easiest logic of all. We'll just go ahead and add this in. I'll press Alt-Z because this one line does wrap. But we'll once again check for cookies. We're expecting to get that HTTP only secure cookie that has the refresh token. And if the cookie doesn't exist with JWT in it, then we're just going to send a status 204, which means yes, the request was successful, but there is no content. Otherwise, we're going to call clear cookie if there is a cookie, so we will remove that cookie when the user decides to manually log out. And we'll look for that JWT cookie, and you have to pass in all of the same options that you did when you created the cookie. And then we'll just respond with a message saying the cookie is cleared. So this would by default be a 200 status response, meaning successful, and the message cookie cleared. After that, we're just exporting all three of these auth controller methods. Now, while we've created the auth controller logic and it does handle the endpoints, it doesn't protect the other endpoints yet with those tokens. So we need to create the middleware that will verify a valid token every time we make a request to a protected endpoint. So let's go to the middleware directory and create a new file now named verifyjwt.js. I'll start this file by defining JWT and requiring that same JSON web token 
requirement or dependency that we have added to our project. And now I'll define verify JWT, and this is middleware. So remember, it receives a request, response, and next. And then we'll go ahead and have an empty function here, and I want to put the module exports at the bottom before I forget. So I'll say module exports equals verify JWT. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and look at what we'll get first inside of this middleware. And I'll put this right at the top and then we'll break it down here. I'll press Alt Z so it does wrap. We're defining the auth header because we're going to look at the header of the request and make sure there is an authorization header either with a lowercase a or a capital A. So we've got the or here because there is no requirement or standard for, hey, it must be lowercase or it must be uppercase. So it's best to look for both. And of course, we're creating this application, full stack MERN project, where we have control over that. But this is a good practice. So you're always looking for either the lowercase or the uppercase authorization header. Now what is required as standard for providing the authorization header is what's in the value. And it should always start out with the word bearer with a capital B and be followed by a space. And after that space should be the token. This is all in a string. So we can check that by checking the auth header we've defined above and then verifying it starts with the string bearer and the space. And if it does not, we can reply with a 401 unauthorized response. And after that, we can go ahead and grab the token. So we define our token, which is the access token, and we get it by splitting that same auth header string that we were looking at above. And we don't want the word bearer or the space. We just want the token that comes after the space. So we split on the space and take the second value. Of course, the first value being stored at the zero position, this would be at the one position. Now that we have the token, we pass that into the JWT verify method and we pass the token in and we verify it with our access token secret and then we have our function here once again if we have error we note that error and then after we do that we send the 403 forbidden response otherwise we should have decoded values and then we'll set the request.user to the decoded.user info dot username and the request dot role should be the same and then we can call next at the end of this now next is the part of the middleware that calls either the next middleware in line or we'll move on to the controller if that's where the request needs to go with that complete i'm going to remove my semicolons just to once again stay consistent as i'm trying to break myself of that habit and then we need to apply this middleware, again, our verified JWT middleware, to the routes that we want to protect. And so let's move back down to our routes directory. And first, we're not going to apply it to the auth routes, but let's look at the auth routes because here we brought in our login limiter middleware. Notice how we could apply it to just one route. We just put it here after our post method and we put in the login limiter comma and then we call the controller method. Now that's possible if you want to just apply it to one route. Likewise in the server, I'll scroll down to our server. We applied app.use and then say our express.json middleware here is applied to the entire app. So that came before any of the routes. It was applied to everything. So our .use method could actually be used to apply everything to all of the routes inside one of our routing files. So let's look at the notes route and we can bring in our verify JWT. So I'll say const verify JWT. We'll set this equal to require and then two dots in our middleware directory and then there's our verify JWT. And now instead of applying it to any one specific route here, I'm just going to say router.use and I'm going to pass in the verify JWT middleware. Now this applied this verify JWT middleware to all of the routes inside of this file. And now I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy both of these and go to the user routes file and apply that here as well. So I'll paste in the require. So we've pulled in verify JWT and then we apply it to all of the routes in the file. With those changes saved, we're now ready to start our backend REST API and test out all the logic that we entered. So let's go ahead and type npm run dev at a command line and get our API up and running. 
It should be running on port 3500. Now let's go to Postman. The last time we used Postman was in lesson four as well. And we can check these endpoints. So we're going to go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3500 that's running on our computer here in the dev environment. And then we'll go to the auth endpoint. So for that, we need to do a few settings here. Let's put in the headers first. We need to tell Postman the content type that we're sending, and that will be application slash JSON. And then we need to go to the body tab and go to the raw selection here, and we'll send that JSON. We'll have an object, and the first thing will be the username. It does go inside of quotes here inside of Postman. And I'm going to send the user I've created called Dan D. He's our stakeholder. And after that, I need to send his password. That's not what I need. So I'll say password. And his password is an exclamation, capital, lowercase d, and then one, two, three, four, five. Just a simple one to test out here. Let's go ahead and send this to the auth endpoint and we'll see what we get back. We've received our access token, but we've also received more than that. So let's see what else. And here's cookies, but this is not where the cookie that we've received is. You can see if I click this, it says no cookies received from server back here in the bodies in the body, we have the access token. However, up here at the top right where it says cookies, we have a cookie manager. Here is our JWT cookie. If I click on that, we can see we have received this secure cookie and it has our refresh token in it. So this is a different token than we received in the body where our access token was. Now to send this back and it will send it with this path here as slash, to all URLs at our local host port 3500. However, it won't right now because we start out with HTTP and not HTTPS. So we need to remove this secure just to test it out because that secure means it must be HTTPS, which is what we would want in deployment, but not right now as we test. So let's save the cookie with that one change and close our cookie manager. And with that change, we can now go to the refresh endpoint. And notice we did send to post, of course, with that auth request, but now we're going to send with a git method here to the refresh endpoint. And it will send the cookie that we just saved over here. Our refresh token is inside of that cookie. So let's send. And I have sent to the wrong endpoint. I need to send actually to auth slash refresh. There we go, instead of just refresh. Now I'll send again, and I expected to get a result there. So let's look at our server and see what's going on. And we can now see inside of the terminal that I didn't just send to slash auth slash refresh. I also had a space, which is represented by this percent 20 at the end. So if we bring postman back up, Let's go ahead and remove that extra space that we can now see is there. And now we should be good. And yes, we did now send to the correct endpoint and we've got an access token back because our refresh token was valid. This is a new access token. And if we were to send again, we'll get a different access token. And now we didn't receive a cookie with a refresh token, but let's verify our cookie is still here. So now let's go to the logout endpoint, which would be slash auth slash logout, and it should delete our cookie. So by the way, I haven't cleared out this raw JSON data here, but we're not using it with these other requests. It was only for the login request, but it doesn't hurt to go ahead and leave it in there. So now I'm going to send a logout and that goes back to the post HTTP method. And this should delete our cookie. So let's send that. It says cookie cleared in the response. Let's look at our cookie manager now, and there are no cookies, so that also worked. Now let's go ahead and log in once again, so we'll go back to just the slash auth route, and now we need this information in the body, and it is a post request, so we'll send in Dandy's information. He's logged in, he's now received a new access token, and we're going to use that to access either the notes or the user's routes, or we could test out both just to make sure our verified JWT middleware is working and checking those access tokens. So now to do this, we need to go back to the headers. And here we're going to add another header. This is going to be authorization. I need the capital A there at the beginning or just an A. Either way, it would take lowercase or the capital. 
their authorization. And now we need to start out this value with bearer and then a space and we can paste in our access token. Now this is not going to work at first and I can tell you why after we do it, but we'll just check that our unauthorized is also working as planned. So now this needs to go to a get request and let's just request all of the notes. So let's send this and oh, I said unauthorized. It's actually forbidden because it was a valid or at least a cookie that we, ex or not cookie, a token that we expected to be issued, but then it had expired. And of course that creates the 403 forbidden. So that is because we only have 10 seconds right now on our access token because I put it in a very short time here in dev mode. I'm going to quickly close the terminal and let's go back to our controller where we have that 10 second setting up here where we first issued that. Let's see, here's 10 seconds and then we had that same setting in the refresh token or refresh endpoint. So I'm going to select both of those with control D, set it to one minute for now and save. I can open up the terminal again just so it we can see it saved and it restarted the backend server with Nodemon. And so we're running again on port 3500. Now let's go back to Postman. And what we need to do here is go back to our auth instead of notes and get a new access token. So it's going to be post. We'll go back to the auth endpoint. And after that, we need to switch over here to the body and make sure we have Dan D's authentication information. So we send that in. He gets a new access token, which we can then copy without the quotes. And then we'll take that over to the headers and I'm going to replace this access token inside of the header with the new access token. We have one minute now to make this work. So paste all of that in. And then we'll go to the notes endpoint and it will be a get request. We'll send our request and now we get all of the existing notes. Now, if this access token hasn't expired yet, we should also be able to request the users. And yes, we've got all of the users, but it probably will expire fairly soon. So we'll check that out as well. So let's go ahead and request the notes again and see if we still have any time left. And we send, yes, we still got it. So I'll just wait a few more seconds and we'll send it once again. And I guess this is a long minute for me. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. And now we're forbidden. So we got the 403 response again. So when this is forbidden, that's when we need to send the refresh token to get a new access token. And we will automate all of that inside of our React application. And you'll find out how to do that with Redux in the very next lesson. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.